And so my guys, very, very shortly, we will be experiencing the exclusive weapon update for Blue Archive. And I figured maybe let's do a quick preparation video, maybe like, I don't know, like six hours before the patch drops. And so at this point, I guess all I can really say is like, Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. This is a Blue Archive video. And today we are going to be talking about the exclusive weapons. We're going to be talking about how exactly you acquire them, how you upgrade them, and then also my kind of working tier list, which is still a work in progress because, oh, for a second I thought everything disappeared. That would have that would have really sucked. But less than the tier list itself, like these positionings, I want to go through the rationale, like kind of the reasoning, the logic that I used to come to this kind of conclusion. Because without it, there's not really any point in actually following this like dumb tier list. And so to kick things off, let's go back to this one over here, the exclusive weapon update from Nexon's patch notes. I think this actually does a pretty good job at explaining what exclusive weapons are. I mean, like if Nexon themselves can't really explain it, then <laughs> who can? Okay, and so to start things off, we have this one over here. Students who reach five star can now equip exclusive weapons. This is very different to one of the other games I play, Princess Connect, where you can actually equip the exclusive weapon or unique equipment whenever, or I think like three star above. And I do know that there is a pretty big overlap of pre-com players and the blue archive players so just beware uh, be wary of this one here and so after that what we have is a new game mode called scrimmage uh maybe it's up over here yep so you can see the scrimmage system trinity gehenna and millennium essentially it is very much like your bounties yeah the bounties where you go in and you kill a bunch of people or things and then you get some growth materials that are used for your exclusive weapons you can also see that it is using the ticket system which is same as the bounty and so yeah you just got to do it. It is kind of like time gated. And so therefore, don't forget about this. So just coming down here, you can see we have a bunch of stages A, B and C for Trinity, etc, etc. And then they are going to drop the better stuff as you go up to the higher ones. So I know it doesn't say, especially like in the bounty, it's like, oh, we only drop purple books. It's not true. Same for this one. Just do the hardest stage. Trust me. All right. And so with all of these different materials, so have a look at this. Rusty spring, intact spring, chromium spring, titanium spring, and then we've got hammers and then we've got bounty. Barrels. So these guys will essentially be used to level up your exclusive weapons. Sorry, I keep trying to say unique equipment, but it's definitely not that. And so at this point, what I do need to tell you is that you can actually use any of these items, the springs, the hammers, and the barrels on any unique, any exclusive weapon. I'm so sorry, guys. However, as you can see, you are able to get a bonus EXP of 1.5 times if you use the correct materials for the correct guns. So SG, SGM, HG, if you guys have not realized it by now these are names of weapons sr sniper rifle mt mortar i think mg machine gun all right and so with that being said your exclusive weapon starts off as a one star weapon and it is going to have a max growth level of 30. you are then going to need to limit breakthrough to be able to get the different perks for example passive skill enhancement sometimes we call it passive plus and so what exactly that looks like is well i'll give you an example so i'm going to come over here this is shirokos profile and then zoomy zoomy a little bit and so you're going to see that her passive skill gives her increase to crit rate so crit rate by 26.6 percent at max now when you equip the exclusive weapon coming down over here at unique equipment you see why i get confused this bad boy when you limit break the first time so this one over here when you get your unique equipment your exclusive weapon to two star you will get the passive skill enhancement the passive plus which is going to be an increase to that base stat before so you see this one over here at level 10 26.6 i want to come back down over here 26.6 at level 10 plus 190 flat crit rate all right and so to recap when we first get our exclusive weapon it is going to start at one stars when we get it to level 30 we are able to break through to two stars in which we'll get a passive plus now from here we are able to actually go all the way up to level 40 and these growth levels we haven't actually talked about it before so i'm going to come over here and so as you can see this is a massive spreadsheet shout out to noxie i believe and patch underscore 8353 for this guy over here and so what we have here in the red column is the attack that is given by the exclusive weapon when you equip it at certain levels right so for example at level 40 for the two star limit breakthrough we will be getting for shiroko she is going to be getting level 4557 attack 
on the HP side, she is going to be getting an extra 2.9k HP. That's that's honestly pretty freaking good, my guys. And so that's kind of like the secondary utility of the unique equipment. The Okay, if I use it interchangeably, I'm really sorry, guys, but I'm sure you know what I mean. These exclusive weapons, in essence, they are a bunch of stat sticks. That's almost it, right? So level 40, 557, we're going to get 2909 HP. And then we're also going to get crit rate depending on how far we have leveled our passive. So as you can see over here, 190 crit rate rate flat if I come back over here 190 crit rate flat as well and so yeah that's unique equipments in a nutshell up to two stars and then when we go to three stars we get terrain strength enhancement which is going to go up to level 50 growth level etc etc however for the terrain strength enhancement essentially what it is saying is that we are going to be getting one of our terrains go up a level in terms of the bonuses and so if you guys didn't know terrain bonuses are actually really freaking important well they're like kind of important right so you've got like these guys over here ss down to d which is uh it's shown by the faces like the smiley faces like this one over here and so what i'm saying here is that when you three star your exclusive weapon you'll be going from one tier to the next tier up and so as you can see each of these tiers are getting a 0.1 times multiplier 15 percent block and 15 percent ignore block all of them are doing that from the bottom all the way to the top. And so honestly, this doesn't really change my description of what a unique weapon is. Jesus, I think I just mixed those words. It is again, in essence, a stat stick. All right, now with all of that being said, there is one last thing to talk about and that is this column over here, LF needed for limit breakthrough. And uh, that is essentially your shards. <laughs> that is a lot of shards. That is essentially going to like six stars and seven stars because 120 shards, especially when you bought out the shop and they're costing like five five of the Oligmas each, man. I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna be one broke sensei. All right, so with all of that being said, I wanna talk about this guy over here, which isn't actually 100% complete because I've been working on it and uh, I haven't gotten much feedback on this yet. And so to complement this tier list over here, I have a bunch of commentary and it's essentially a bunch of different rules where I'm like, oh, uh, this is how exactly I formed this tier list. And so let's run through these rules real quick, starting with number one, DPS gets top priority if they have a good exclusive weapon passive offensive stats. So I'm talking if they're getting the attack, if they are getting the crit rate or the crit damage. There are some cases where the character, the unit such as Haruna is gonna be getting like a trash stat. We know that Haruna is indeed a blue DPS. And so her preferred stats would be attack, crit rate, crit damage. No, she's getting HP guys. She's getting HP. And so using that kind of rule, you can see why I've actually bumped Haruna down to a B. I might even say go to a C, but Haruna, there are some other rules that will be explaining why she is at a B, okay? So coming down to number two, we have because of the 80% cap on some of the stats in Blue Archive, they are some exclusive weapons that seem good, but may not actually be due to overcapping. And one of these characters are Azusa. So the thing about Azusa is that she gets an insane amount of crit rate. And with the exclusive weapon, she is pretty much going to be overcapping, not like by a crazy, crazy amount, but like by a good amount where you can say like Azusa's exclusive weapon maybe you can equip it but like don't level it up very high kind of thing and so it's for reasons like this that when i come back to the tier list you're going to see azusa in the b tier like honestly what i just said she is a dps she is a very very good red dps she should need crit rate crit damage and attack she got crit rate why is she bad because it's not actually improving her if she is hitting cap anyway okay and so with that rule out of the way i'm going to come back to number three despite rule two ew exclusive weapons still give a good amount of base stats as you saw over here some of these characters are getting a lot of attack and a lot of HP. For example, I can see Aru over here. She's getting freaking like 737 attack at level 40. You've got freaking Arisu at 841. You've got a couple of others like 748 for Haruna, 894 for Hasumi. Like honestly, it gets pretty freaking cracked out because this is base attack. And so what I'm trying to say here is that there may be situations where you do need the extra bits of HP to like gain that survivability so that maybe you can push into extreme or maybe you need the extra heals for like your Hana Air or your Serena like I remember from Hiero like this bit of healing over here as well as this healing over here could actually get you over to some thresholds to get that EX clear all right so moving on next we have for number four the more frequently a unit is used the higher priority they may have and so that is why I put Haruna up here because Haruna is used a lot she's used in story she's used in Peroro she's used in Shiro 
Hirokuro. She's used in PvP. I know she's not meta right now, but I've been finding a lot of success with Haruna. And so because I use her so much, those extra stats cannot be a bad thing, right? Getting that extra survivability as well as extra attack. And if I'm using her in like five different places, frick, why wouldn't I slam it, right? However, this rule is a lot less applicable to your special units. So Haruna is a striker. She goes on the field. Special units such as Hanae, they kind of chill in the background and you deploy their skills and that's kind of it. And the reason for that is because remember that these exclusive weapons are essentially stat sticks. You want your stat sticks on the characters that are going on the field. The special units, they do give a percentage, a portion of their stats to the strikers. However, it's just not overly effective. And so that is why you're going to see units like Hibiki, units like Hane, units like uh, Serena, like all down here, Kotama as well. Because their main job to do, their main purpose is for Hibiki, it's her EX skill as well as that sub skill, which is giving everyone crit damage. And then something very, very similar to Kotama, where you're just using her for the EX attack buff up. And then uh, I think it was attack for her sub skill. So you could certainly argue like, oh, Hibiki, her EX skill with the exclusive equipment is just going to get a lot stronger. So therefore you should equip it. And that rationale is correct. I would agree. Uh, so you could technically bump her up to a B, which is why I say this is still a work in progress. However, more than moving her from C to B, it's more about the rationale. It's like, why do you want to move her from C to B? It's because you are using her a lot. It's because you need more damage on an EX skill. Now that makes sense. So just slam it. All right. And so just on this more frequently used rule, essentially, if I go from the top down, uh, Iori, she is essentially everybody's most used character. If you have her, Maki, she's not used overly much, but she is used quite a fair bit, especially in the context of Bina and the fact that she is getting such a strong stat for her unique equipment passive plus I think she's getting attack speed up like there is almost no way that you wouldn't equip Maki and then we have a whole bunch of these A units which are essentially a combination of being used a lot as well as having the right element uh, not right element the right crit stats or the right HP stats if they're a tank or the defense stats if they're a tank etc we've got Tsubaki we've got Haruka over here we've got a bunch of attackers over here I know Izuna is getting crit damage buff which is utterly insane and then on top of that I would argue that you're probably going to be using all of these characters very very frequently and so coming down to B over here these are kind of like your less frequently used units although I use Haruna so much I use Kotama so much and Azusa so much but unfortunately these units are like they just don't don't have exactly the most impactful passive plus and so therefore they are shifted down in priority and then with that kind of logic you can build the c tier and then the d tier etc etc and obviously there are some that i might have made mistakes on so again work in progress guys <laughs> work in progress all right and so that is going to lead us into rule number five which is don't forget to take into account their skill interactions if any so for tsubaki she actually goes ahead and gains freaking attack speed which is utterly weird right so if you look over here attack speed 1400 uh yes <laughs> that is so freaking weird however coming back to over here eg tsubaki gains attack speed which may seem trash but it allows her to cycle more reloads therefore increasing her defensive capabilities due to her skill two i think skill one i can't remember if it was like skill one or skill two but yeah this rule doesn't apply to like a significant amount of units however like in tsubaki that one is really really important and there are a couple of these as well and so the last rule i do want to talk about is the terrain modifiers are great but a one increase in level which is going from two star to three star exclusive weapon is only 0.1 times modifier 15% block and 15% ignore block like it's good but it's not like something that like you must have to have you know what I'm saying and so with all of that being said I would come back to this tier list over here and I would say that I think I've built this tier list according to those rules there are some which may be outliers like this one over here I actually like very rarely use her so I would personally dump her down to a C because my guys if you freaking barely use a unit what's the point of putting on the exclusive weapon for them like you're not gonna get any mileage and then on the other hand, I see a bunch of people actually put Akane down here. Akane, who is very frequently used for a lot of bosses because of her defense down on her EX skill. Her utility is just not damage. She is there to do the defense down. And if you look at the charts, she barely ever does like very much damage. So therefore, mm, C might be a bit harsh. I might move her up to a B. But hopefully using these examples, I think you guys kind of get how I built this list. And so I'm going to say that is probably going to be the end of it. All right, so I think that was a good one. Let's uh, let's potentially wrap it up there. And so I am going to pass on the secret question to you guys. Are you guys ready for this exclusive weapon update? Because I can tell you, I am not. My Iori is freaking four star, like, and I have no freaking shards. I, <laughs> oh shit. 
yeah, personally, I feel like the investment is really, really steep, how you have to hit 5 star first, and then you can get the, the exclusive weapon, but that's kind of whatever. It's not about me today, it's about you. Let me know down in the comments whether you are prepared for this exclusive weapon update. And so my guys, if you do end up leaving a comment, I would really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this video or you found it kind of helpful, then please consider leaving a like, subscribing to my channel, or even turning on that notification bell on. However, as your girl uh, Shiroko once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.